Hey guys, Cody here with Fountain Atelier, and it's time to do another artist critique. Today, I'm going to take a look at 19th century French artist William Adolf Bouguereau, a painter who is both revered and ridiculed, depending on who you talk to. Before we jump into that, I want to let you know that this critique is brought to you by the new online coaching program at Fountain Atelier. Today, I'm critiquing Bouguereau, but if you want me to give you personalized feedback on your work, along with coaching, goal setting, and more, check out the link in the description. Okay, let's get started. If you're a fan of 19th century academic style artwork, there's a good chance you know who we're talking about today. But just in case you don't, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of our artist and then critique one of his pieces. At the end of the video, I'll give you my overall opinion of him and his work, so make sure you stick around. Also, if you want to join in on the conversation, feel free to leave comments down below. Let's get a great discussion going. William Adolphe Bouguereau was born in France in 1825 to a family of wine merchants. While his family wanted him to become a priest, he actually fell in love with classical drawing and painting and was accepted into the State Art Academy, the École des Beaux Arts. He was a star student, and he even eventually won the Prix de Rome, one of the top art awards in France. He's probably best known for his technical mastery of oil painting and his general subject matter of mythological characters, religious scenes, and people in peasant outfits. This early painting from 1851, Fraternal Love, is a typical religious piece of his featuring Mary and the close relationship between John the Baptist and Jesus. Likewise, The Shepherdess from 1895 touches on this repeated theme of his of figures in peasant clothing in a rural scene, kind of peering longingly at the viewer. He went on to have an incredible career as one of the most famous artists in Europe in the mid to 19th century. At the height of his fame, his work often sold shortly after it was finished and sometimes even before. Millionaires and royalty across Europe and America filled their mansions with his work and he won many awards. He spent several years teaching at the Academy Julian in Paris, which was kind of a community art academy. As time went on, tastes in art changed and his conservative academic style fell out of fashion as more avant-garde movements like Impressionism came along. While everyone respected his ability to paint, he was criticized for selling out, painting only what the market wanted and would pay for, versus exploring deeper, more personal themes. He died in 1905 at the age of 79. The painting I'm going to critique is called The First Morning and was painted in 1888. Now, if you caught my John Singer Sargent critique series, you know that I evaluate a work of art based on three criteria conceptual meaning, composition, and technical proficiency. We'll do the same here. By the way, if you want to check out that Sargent Critique series, I'll link it at the end of this video. All right, let's take a close look at the first morning. Conceptually, this painting falls snugly within Bouguereau's religious-themed work. It features three figures from Genesis, the first book of the Bible, Adam, Eve, and their son Abel. If you know the story, then you know where this is going. Things aren't looking too good for Abel. He's just been murdered by his brother, Cain. Blood drips from his head as his pale, lifeless body is lying across Adam's lap while his mom, Eve, is distraught and crying. The scene draws a lot of similarities to another famous piece that Bouguereau would have been familiar with, Michelangelo's Pietà. Adam tries to comfort her while also holding his own heart, signaling his despair. The sky is dark and we can see a fire burning off in the distance to the right. Maybe this is Abel's offering to God that Cain wasn't a fan of. This painting packs an emotional punch, and that's something that we don't often see from Bouguereau. There's something so raw about Eve's emotions, something we can connect with. Adam is doing his best as a leader of the family, but I'm sure he too doesn't really know how to deal with it. Think about it. This is the first death in the Bible. And it was a murder. How would you feel if you were Adam and Eve? Not only is your son dead, but it was your other son who killed him. The title is a play on words. It's called The First Morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, 
as this was the first death, but it also refers to a new chapter in the sinful human experience. The mostly neutral grayish tone in the colors helps to convey the sadness of the scene. Remember, most of Bouguereau's work is fairly cheery. Angels, little cherubs, um, pretty girls, on and on. This one is deep and filled with despair. It's an emotion that Bouguereau himself could relate to. He had five children and he outlived all but one. Unfortunately, he dealt with the death of four kids in his lifetime, and while death of children was more common then than it is now, it still had to be pretty hard to deal with. Compositionally, Bouguereau has done a masterful job here. The three-figure grouping was a favorite of his, and they are situated tightly in the middle of the picture. They loosely form a triangle, moving up Eve's back to Adam's head, and then down the angled torso of his body in Abel's lifeless arms. The prominence of Adam's legs and feet give the grouping a sense of stability and kind of grounds them right in the center. Abel's body aligns along a dramatic curve, which is countering the straight lines of the triangle. This creates a lot of visual interest and keeps us, us engaged in the design. Notice that the color of Adam's skin is quite a bit warmer than that of Eve or Abel's. This contrast in color temperature helps to make Abel's body really pop out giving us a clear focal area right there around his midsection. Obviously, Abel has just been killed, so he is pale, and Eve's pale skin might attest to the state of shock she's in seeing her dead son. On that note, let's see how this compares to the sculpture I mentioned previously, the Pietà. In Michelangelo's sculpture, we see a lot of compositional similarities. Abel lies across Adam's lap, similar to how Jesus lays in Mary's lap. Abel and Christ, however, are in opposite positions. Jesus in a concave posture, while Abel is a little bit more convex. Both are only wearing a loincloth and have their arms hanging limply to the side. The nail hole can be seen in Christ's hand, and we can see evidence of Abel's wound in the puddle of blood under his head. Bouguereau kept everything else in the composition pretty simplified, as he didn't want to draw attention away from our figure grouping. Note, there isn't much detail in the clouds or the landscape behind them. He even kept the fire off in the distance, uh, barely noticeable, which was smart because that would definitely be a distraction if the bright orange flame was more visible. Technically, well, just look at it. People may not have liked his subject matter, but no one could deny that the man could paint. Here we see his hallmarks, hands, feet, and flesh. His method of layering and scumbling produced skin tone so real you would swear that it was a real thing. The hands and feet are superb in this painting with perfect for shortening and proportion. I especially love, love Eve's hands. They've been simplified and subordinated to make sure they stay in the shadow while conveying Eve's intense emotion as she has her face buried in them alongside Adam's chest. The skin tones here look great, but if you ever have the chance to go see a Bouguereau in person at a museum, do it. Pictures truly don't do them justice. The little bit of fabric in the painting is really well rend rendered, as are the wispy clouds and smoke in the distance. So overall, what do I think of this painting and of Bouguereau himself? Well, I definitely haven't seen everything out there and I'm no expert, but technically, he might be one of the best figurative painters I've ever seen. His flesh tones are so lifelike when you see them in person. Speaking from experience, hands and feet are some of the most complicated subjects to draw and paint. He makes it look effortless. Although a lot of his compositions are fairly simple, they're really well done and they keep us engaged. Conceptually, well, for me, it kind of depends on the painting. The one we looked at today, the first morning, is fantastic, and it's one of its best. In my opinion, it hits on all cylinders, combining a heavy, meaningful concept with great execution and design. That being said, I don't love all of his concepts. He did paint a lot of the same subject matter over and over to please his buyers. Don't get me wrong, they're still amazing paintings from a technical perspective, but it does get a little repetitive. But as a creative person who runs a small business myself, can I blame him? I mean, he found a niche that worked for him and it was wildly successful. By all accounts, he enjoyed the subject matter he painted despite the criticism that he got. 
You know, it'd be different if he was miserable and felt like he was forced to do the subject matter just to make money. But I think he was so fascinated by the process of executing a painting that it didn't really matter what he did. He would be happy as long as he was in the studio working. In fact, near the end of his life, he was quoted as saying, Each day I go to my studio full of joy. In the evening, when obliged to stop because of darkness, I can scarcely wait for the next morning to come. If I cannot give myself to my dear painting, I am miserable. So, what do you think? If you're still with me, give me your take in the comments below. Do you love his work? Was he a commercial sellout? Would you have liked to see him try a different subject matter? Let's talk about it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. It is a quick, free way to support my studio. In the meantime, I'll be putting together another artist critique video. Until then.